Hello everyone. During my long career in clinical research, I have visited hundreds of site and interacted with a lot of CRCs. And one of the most asked question by them is how to become a CRA from CRC position. So I thought that why not deconstruct all the aspects that are required to become a CRA and help all the CRCs understand what exactly a CRA role is, how do we get to that and how can we transition ourselves from a CRC to CRA. So make sure you watch this video till the end so that you can completely understand how you can move towards the CRA position and achieve your goal. Without further ado, let's start. So in this particular session, we are going to break down the transition and understand why we need transition from CRC to CRA. Then we are going to learn what are the required actions that a CRC should take to become a CRA. Then we would look into what is the necessary skill set of a CRA that CRC needs to develop. Finally, we'll understand how CRA preparation is done by the CRCs. And then we'll move on to experience utilization where your CRC experience can be used into the CRA role. And finally, we'll understand how to make a CRA career and progress forward. So these are all the major topics. Let's understand them one by one. Now, first and foremost, we must understand why is there need for transition from CRC to CRA? Why everyone wants to get into the CRA role? So before we understand why, we must know for all the viewers who are even not CRCs, let's understand what is the basic qualification for a CRC. Then and only then you can move into the CRA role. So for being a CRC, the first qualification you need is you need to have your graduation or post graduation in sciences. It can be in pharmacy, medicine, biotech, or you can have a master's or bachelor's degree in biotech, microbio, chemistry, botany, zoology, etc. So that is the fundamental requirement. Next, for a CRC, you need some kind of bona fide education. So it can be a certification, diploma, or a degree in clinical research, which can help you get the fundamentals of clinical research. And finally, as a CRC, you need to know that the clinical research core understanding as well as your uh, GCP certification and know how of the CRC job. Now, here I'm assuming that you're already a CRC and want to move to a CRA role. Okay. So now let us understand the transition from CRC to CRA role. So whenever you are a CR CRC, so there is a huge barrier from transitioning from a CRC role to a CRA role. Okay. So if you are a clinical research coordinator, the next natural step towards your career advancement is to become a CRA. Okay. And a lot of CRC aspire to become a CRA. So to become a CRA, there is a certain attraction because the CRA position not only gives you the next step, it also gives you ability to travel to multiple locations. It gives you direct exposure to the process like trial design, creation of data management plan, study plans, as well as it provides you a better room and a higher ceiling to move your career forward. Because as a CRC at site, you would max to max become senior CRC or site manager, but it limits your exposure from that particular site only. But as a CRA, it it explores yourself to multiple sites. It helps you understand the trial in a more diverse sort of way and it opens the progress of your career. Now, why is there difficulty in transitioning from CRC and why a lot of CRCs face issues uh, to become a CRA? So most of the sponsor uh, essentially want to hire CRAs who have past monitoring experience. Okay, because this helps them uh, not to babysit the CRA. It helps them to directly uh, utilize the CRA from the day one and assign them multiple studies and multiple sites. Okay, so understand that if you are a sponsor, you would like your CRA to start his monitoring visit. Okay, and a lot of uh, sponsors do not want to do not want to invest in training. Okay, because the more they invest in training, the more time you are not visiting to multiple sites and your billable hours decrease okay so that is why the sponsor always wants the uh, the 
CRAs to be hired who have experience of trial monitoring. Okay, and whenever whenever you are a CRC, the experience of a site coordinator doesn't seem to be that much valued uh, when it comes to hiring CRAs. Okay, because the reason is that you do not have monitoring experience. Okay, uh, of clinical trial, you only have experience of being monitored. Okay, so whenever you are a CRC, being a CR is a totally different ball game. and the sponsor always wants a cra who is already trained okay so the training part of a crc is to be taken care of okay and in gcp also okay so a lot of people ask me that where is it written that you need to have experience to be a cra okay uh, i have seen positions such as fresher cra also so some companies do invest uh, in cra training or some company do have the bridging programs but when you see the guidelines the gcp it clearly states that the sponsors are required to hire a qualified cra okay so this particular terminology in the mind of the sponsor or a cro essentially highlights that the cra which is going to be working on a study needs to have experience okay of clinical trial monitoring so you must understand from their perspective also that whenever you join as a cra you have to go and conduct monitoring visit you cannot ask them that what should i do as a cra okay because that part you already needs to know up to a certain level they can help you understand the procedures and processes but being a monitor what is monitoring that is something that you need to know okay now let us see how we can do that so now we are assuming that you are a crc and now let us see what are the actions you need to take to transition from the crc to cra position so how do i do it how do i transition from crc to cra the first and foremost uh, activity that you need to do is don't go for a cra direct position go for a filler position by a filler position what i mean is that whenever you transition from a crc to cra position the cra position comes with certain experience and that particular experience you are going to get as a cta role okay so try to look for opportunity of a cta which is clinical trial associate in this particular role you would develop skills to be eligible for a cra position and that particular position okay it will essentially help the sponsor understand that you are qualified of being a cra and through that particular progression they would move you from the cta to cra position okay so it is very important to understand that from crc you need to go into cta position get a foot into door get the experience and skill set then move into a cra position okay if you come across fresher cra position i request you not to go for that position because no matter how much they are willing to train you they would not train you thoroughly and if you are not train thoroughly if you don't know how to conduct monitoring you are bound to make mistake you are bound to miss the eligibility the trial conduct and there is a concern of patient safety okay so make sure that before being a cra you are very well confident with monitoring you know what monitoring is and what particular activities expected from you as per gcp as per regulatory requirements okay as per the industry standards okay so what i would suggest is go for a cta position first from a crc the another route uh, that you can become a cra is that sometimes the sponsor themselves hire crc okay so as a crc even they get exposure that how you are working at a particular site and they are willing you to bridge from crc to cra position even that is another route okay so if you are a sponsor crc they have any opening uh, from their end for a cra then also they consider you for a cra position okay and last but not the least make sure that you network make sure you connect with all the cras who visit at your site make sure you talk to them make sure you understand their journey ask them how did they become a cra do they have their crc experience what and all criteria do they feel were important that made them a good cra communicate with them make sure that uh, during the lunch breaks during uh, some off time when the cra is ready to talk to you make sure that you communicate in an efficient manner to understand their perspective and requirements and finally prepare yourself okay no matter how much cv you give to strangers to cras to anyone until and unless you are prepared yourself to be a cra do not apply for a cra position i have seen a lot of crcs who do not understand cra role they apply for cra jobs when they get interviewed they do not 
understand the questions okay they fail the interviews and this leads to uh, them for the confidence to tank and this particular reduced confidence does not help you to get that position so make sure you network with the community with clinical researchers talk to them make sure uh, you talk to your cras and finally make sure that you prepare yourself okay now let us see how can that preparation begin so by preparation i mean the necessary skill set is need to be understood for a cra position you need to understand what are the necessary skill set that i can be able to develop to be a cra Now, whenever we look at skill set of a CRA, we are going to look at multiple activities, multiple skill set. Let us understand them one by one. See, the first and foremost skill set would be the basics. Okay, make sure that you understand all the clinical research uh, concepts, all the fundamentals of clinical research. You understand the GCP. Okay, I C GCP E six R eight. Okay, then. Uh, the latest amendment e6 r2 e6 r3 is going to come make sure you understand your regulatory guidelines okay in which particular region you are working so those basic should be rock solid okay once you have those basic then you move on to monitoring you want to become a cra you want to become a study monitor you need to understand what is monitoring you need to know how is the monitoring process how does monitoring is being conducted what are the industry standards and requirement for monitoring okay make sure you understand what are the steps for monitoring i have made detailed video also in types of monitoring visit make sure you can i leave uh, the link in the description make sure you look at each and every visit okay so there are multiple types of monitoring visit you need to understand each one of them okay because based on that understanding only you are going to crack that interview so make sure your monitoring fundamentals process and requirements are taken care of then you move on to the site okay so make sure you understand how site management is done how your site management experience can help you be a cra also you need to understand that whenever you are a crc if you face any kind of challenge you pick up your call you call to the cra you ask them i am stuck here and there and how can i resolve this but when you are going to be a cra you need to solve that problem you will have multiple sites 10 sites 20 sites and they are going to call you up they are going to ask you that whether this criteria is fitting into the protocol whether this eligibility is correct we have uh, certain uh, requirements for ip for lab kits for any other ancillary supplies okay so you need to have that problem solving mindset because no one is going to babysit you as a cra okay it is your responsibility it is your site you need to solve all the problems so make sure you understand that also and make sure you develop a problem solving attitude instead of relying on someone else as a crc you, you rely, rely on pi for the trial conduct for other things and other issues you directly call to your cras but being a cra you have to be ready and you have to prepare yourself so make sure from site end you are capable of managing the site and you are capable of problem solving also now next part would be the communication okay so when you are a crc you communicate with the patient with pi and with cra but when you are a cra the tables are turned you have to talk to 10 to 10 to 20 sites 10 to, 10 to 20 crcs 10 to 20 uh, principal investigator that is the site part next part is the sponsor you have to answer to the sponsor that how the recruitment is going what are the challenges then you have to understand sponsor requirement also you have to implement that to the site if you are at a c uh, if you are at a uh, cro okay then you are in between the sponsor and the site so you have to manage both uh, sponsor requirement as well as the site functioning okay so you have to get things done so make sure that your communication skills are good make sure that all the stakeholders in the trial including the site including the sponsor the cro requirements and the coordination that has to be flawless okay so you need to talk to multiple stakeholders you need to communicate effectively make sure that the fundamentals of communication such as email writing i have seen a lot of people when they write email they 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 write whatever they think or they say but when it comes to formal communication during clinical trial there is a certain level of format that you need to understand there is a certain level of uh, for example subject line in an email you observe the little things that what the cr is giving to you and whenever you are a CRA, you have to implement that. So make sure your communication is good and you improve on the fundamentals of communications also. 
next thing is flexibility okay so when you are a crc you are at site and you follow all the site procedures okay when whenever the working weeks get end okay you go go to your home and you are relaxed but whenever whenever you are a cra you have to have tremendous flexibility because during the cra role your time okay because cra role is an operations role your time would not be restricted from 9 am to 6 pm this is an operation job it would require you to manage all the expectation and all the work so you have to have that man time management uh, experience or you have to develop skills for time management also you are going to travel okay so it does not mean that if i, I am at a x site the y site won't be calling you will be monitoring looking at the subject source reviewing it and at the same time you'll get a call from another site for resolving a particular issue you'll get call from the sponsor to ask you about the recruitment and your implementation plan so along with travel you have to manage all the things as well as you will have multiple number of trials also okay so you have to manage all the stakeholders all the trials you have to be very very flexible so that flexibility the mental flexibility the physical flexibility that you have to develop okay so that is also one of the key skill set of a cra and last but not the least multitasking CRA position is nothing but operating on multiple platforms multiple stakeholders and multiple trial requirements so make sure that you are comfortable with conducting multiple visits whenever you complete a visit you are required to submit reports within a certain time frame so if i am doing visit today and i am going to another site tomorrow the report has to be prepared so that timeline you have to manage you have to manage the recruitment the trial conduct also and you also have to manage your kpas okay so the key performance areas that you are given as a cra that ha also has to be taken care of so you can understand that whenever you are a cra the position is very very different you have to develop a lot of skills and if you are a crc now make sure you understand everything make sure that you gradually develop the skill and once you are confident then we can move to a cra position so these are the key and critical skill set that are required for a cra so now that we have covered the cra crc transition uh, the action required to become a cra and understood what are the skill set required so in the next week we will see how to go into cra interview okay what are the topics how to crack that interview we will understand how to use the crc experience when you are a cra and also we would understand that now once you are a cra how you can progress further into cra role so please make sure that you subscribe and stay to to our channel to see the part 2 of this video and complete your transition from crc to cra so thank you for watching this video till the end make sure you like share and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned